In short, if I were to put it, in short, so it needs to go from small to large, simple to complex, low capacity, grow to a higher capacity, grow muscle fiber to improve, you have more muscle fiber too with a higher capacity growth that leads into more muscular hypertrophy, muscular gain, and muscle tone vascularity with a gaining basal metabolic rate at that point too. Biosynthesis and anabolism, catabolism is major. Breaking down the breakdown, the processing, the synthesizing, energy is released, basal metabolic rate pours amount of energy to make the amount of metabolic to get to a point where because it, it's crucial for the energy for it to be the foods nutrients to be broken down process synthesized so the anabolic rate is kept and require the amount of energy necessary for your basal metabolic rate to make metabolic site like, crucial in the growth of production and development of fibers Must, so biosynthesis happens in return to this the heart can work with the blood vessels so it has the energy that it does need so the blood vessels can supply into action to the biocells and muscle tissue that it does need so it doesn't deteriorate and doesn't break down anyways let's talk about vitamin a so what is vitamin a Usually, fat soluble substances. A group of fat soluble substances that can be found high, highly in animal products, as I would like to say, highly. What would you say, highly? Oh, I am smart. I'm gonna say highly because I'm just putting two words. Is that like two letters onto the high? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's two letters. Shit, the bees are coming after me. I'm joking, guys. Anyways, the bees are coming after me. So, we have fat soluble substances that can be found high in animal products and along with this now what happens this whole kind of this whole kind of process happens so along with retinol with an a along with retinol with an o which is aldehyde as we know it and along with aldehyde is an organic compound that is a double bonded with oxygen and hydrogen which carbonyl and with the R group and what is the R group? I know you guys want to know what the R group is. Well, it's an alkyl generic alkyl or a side chain that is major again with the the carbon bonding having this double bond with oxygen and hydrogen and along with carbonyl having this bond is so crucial to happen. R group. So we get in, into the point where these substances, the fat soluble substances, to the point where th now this is this is the process of vitamin A. How it gets turned to vitamin A. So it, it transforms into retinol, which is again an alcohol. So in return, these substances becomes alcohol. They get transformed into retinol, not retinol with an O, which is all the which is all the high, of course. And with the retinol, that is an alcohol. So you get transformed into retinol, and then beta carotene comes into place. Now it can be found highly in fruits and vegetables, and that gets converted to when it gets converted to vitamin A, that is the whole process of vitamin A, how it happens. Yo, guys, I, I was looking up this stuff last night. I was like, you know, this stuff is, is pretty, pretty intriguing about all this, how these fat-soluble substances, they can get transformed into retinol alcohol and learning retinol and retinol. How do you say it? Listen, you give me a scientist right now. How do you freaking say this word? It, it's... So retinol it comes out the same way, but with an O to it rather than an A to it. How the freak do you do this? How, how do you do this? Listen, I want to know. You guys comment in the comment section below. How do you do this? How do you say these words? It's transformed. After it gets transformed to alcohol, beta carotene is found highly in fruits and vegetables, and that gets converted into vitamin A. That's the whole process of vitamin A. How it gets transformed to alcohols. How beta carotene comes into place high in fruits and vegetables and gets converted into vitamin A. That all has to work along to you with the retinol and going along with the R group what is an aldehyde aldehyde what does that sound like an aldehyde you think I'm you think I'm lying you really think I'm lying you look that up right now look up vitamin A the definition of vitamin A aldehyde or whatever so it's an organic compound that has a, a double bond with carbogen which carbogen with carbon with carbon and oxygen, a double bond with carbon and oxygen, along with hydrogen and carbonyl, and along with the R group that is a generic alkyl or a side chain as we know it. And but carotene of course comes in into play at that point. You know what? We got a video done. Ah oh, shit, it's raining again. Ah oh, shit guys. Anyways, I wanna thank you for 
uh, checking this video today. It means a lot to me, guys. You know, it's an amazing life I live. You know, I can wake up, have a bowl of oatmeal. I can have some eggs. And, uh, what 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 consists of my my my, my lifestyle choice? Well, of course, as I, I said many times, I I I don't have good genetics. A lot of people that don't have genetics. It's usually you go along with the lines of diabetes. Usually go along with high cholesterol. Usually have high cholesterol too, but you can't blame that on genetics because it's really your food choice, as this one guy would say. But you have all this unnatural cholesterol. You have all of this cholesterol that you do not need. You need the natural cholesterol. The food's rather lower in cholesterol. They don't have an LDL buildup. They don't deliver and supply cholesterol to buy cells and tissue that does nothing but deteriorate and break them down. But you don't want this because when you have so much unnatural cholesterol, your liver does not know what to do. And it usually fails at this point in overconsumption of sugar, like dextrose monohydrate and high fructose corn syrup, does nothing to your blood glucose level, your blood sugar, but make it even high, spike it, make it even low when you, carbohydrates you're not having enough, when nearly you're having way too many, it makes it so that the pancreas cannot form, produce, insulin the hormone insulin to regulate stabilize blood glucose level you can't rely on glucagon because that's just the second one it's not the primary one and insulin what is type 1 diabetes i, I want to talk about this right now so what is type 1 diabetes type 1 diabetes is where you can really control it as long as you keep your carbohydrate intake your daily intake of carbohydrate stable you don't make it too low or too high make sure that it's easy for the hormone insulin and the, and the hormone glucagon to regulate and stabilize it but Type 2 diabetes is where it's way, 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 way too high, way too low. Usually just way too high. You have way too many carbohydrates. If you have way too many carbohydrates, you have way too much sugar. Insulin is not even being made in the body. Glucagon is being made, but that's not the, the major one for stabilizing blood glucose level. So ultimately, you have to rely on artificial, handmade ways to get insulin back in your body so you can stabilize your blood glucose level when it is really corrupted. And you have all this unnatural cholesterol. You have all these foods that are part of the polyunsaturated fat group that has the LDL buildup that are more reactive and they're higher in cholesterol because they carry the cholesterol through the body cells and muscle tissue. And usually they're referred to as low density liver protein. And I know low is like, is that good? And no, it's not. And as you go along with HL, because that is bad cholesterol. LDL is bad cholesterol. Good cholesterol is HL. High density liver protein that is lower in cholesterol. When we look at omega 3 fatty acids, alpha linoleic acids, omega 6 fatty acids, linoleic acids, as we look at omega, and now along with this, omega 6 fatty acids. Now, what are they? The polyunsaturated fats family. So they're higher in cholesterol, and they're generally higher in cholesterol. They're more reactive, and since they're higher in cholesterol and deliver cholesterol to buy cells and muscle tissue, they do nothing for, for our liver, but to our liver, so we have more prominent risks of LDL, bad cholesterol, high cholesterol, and along with that, liver failure, bad liver function, premature death, you don't know what state you're dying at. You don't even know when you're gonna die. It, it's usually early, premature death. You're affecting both your heart too, cardiovascular diseases, cardiovascular deaths, when you have this fat blockage, and that the blood vessels, your blood vessels cannot supply and deliver oxygen to the body cells, much tissue, so cholesterol is then delivered and it breaks down deteriorate the bicep muscle tissue but usually in along with your arteries you have arteries that are not healthy that don't have the cholesterol they need that don't have the natural cholesterol that they need they have the unnatural cholesterol and since you're having the fats that are higher in cholesterol that are more reactive since they're higher in cholesterol they have this LDL buildup along with this you're related to the polyunsaturated fats family that is more reactive does only but increase your cholesterol levels and you want to go back you want to lower your cholesterol what 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 do you do you really focus on? Well, get rid of the saturated fats. Get rid of the lipids that are low density liver proteins. Go with the high density liver proteins that do nothing but lower your cholesterol. And it's healthy. It keeps your cholesterol healthy. So your your arteries are healthy and your liver is healthy. You don't get a fatty liver. You don't develop a fatty liver. A liver that is overweight and obese. Can your liver be obese? Yes. Anyways, omega-3 fatty acids, now these are part of the mild such fats family. When I, when I say this, why are they crucial in lowering your cholesterol? Since they are naturally lower in cholesterol, in cholesterol, they don't deliver and supply cholesterol to the body cells and with tissue. It does not need, but it breaks it down. In deteriorates, they don't have any bad effects. Omega-3 fatty acids are crucial. Omega-7 mild saturated fats group, along with 
or make a nine fatty acid with the lake acid is not needed, but they can lower cholesterol because they're lowering cholesterol rather than being part of the polyunsaturated fatty family that is more reactive, that is higher in cholesterol, does nothing to your cholesterol, but LDL cholesterol spikes. Low density of the protein, again, bad cholesterol along with that. Bad liver function, liver failure, fatty liver, fatty heart, cardiovascular disease. If you have more of these fats that are higher in cholesterol, you have all the sodium chloride that you need. Sodium bicarbonate, they were... They were shooting me up with sodium bicarbonate at the hospital, and guess what I said? I was like, are you injecting sodium into my body? And guess what they say? They said, yeah. Just like Tony McGuire from Spider-Man 3. Yeah. And guess what? I was like, oh no, you're not. You're not ingest. You're not delivering sodium into my body right after I just got done losing 30 pounds. Nah, -uh, Jose. Okay, anyways. It's a long story, but I'm pretty sure you guys wouldn't want to. You wouldn't want to hear about it. It's, it's a long story. Everything I've read is It's a very, very, very long story. But rather focus on the fats that are low in cholesterol, that are part of the monosaturated fats group, that are not as reactive, that are not higher in cholesterol, and don't react when you cook with them. They're even more, they're even more dangerous for your cholesterol. They're even higher in cholesterol, the LDL, because the low density lipid protein is like. They seem to evolve when, now this is something I learned a long time ago, so even if you're cooking rather with olive oil, if you're cooking with extra virgin olive oil and just regular olive oil, but extra virgin olive oil is more of that, that realness that you want. Olive oil, I mean, it's, it's, it's fine for your cholesterol, fine to lower your cholesterol, but since it has omega-9 fatty acids, oleic acids, extra virgin olive oil, it is better to lower your cholesterol rather to rely on extra virgin olive oil tint than olive oil. Uh, just switch them out, you know. Uh, I've been having some regular olive oil for the months, but you know, try some combinations, switch them up so you can lower your cholesterol. You don't have to worry about your liver problems with your liver. You have all this unnatural cholesterol that does nothing to it, but destroy the liver and all of that. It destroys your heart too. You have all the saturated fats, plenty of saturated fats. Foods that are high in cholesterol, foods that are high in soy milk that does nothing but destroy your liver, destroys your heart. As well, rely on the omega-3 fatty acids, rely on the omega-7 fatty acids, omega-9 fatty acids, oleic acids. And when we talk about omega-7 fatty acids, we go from omega-7 fatty acids to omega-9 fatty acids, oleic acids, eukaryotic acids, more omega-7 fatty acids, monosaturated fat group, so it's part of the lower end cholesterol in the major in decreasing your cholesterol so you don't destroy your liver and your heart in the long, long run but they have to deal with palmetto lake and acetic acids thank you guys for sticking with me in this video today i really appreciate it wait i'm just thinking so we got everything done uh thank you guys for watching this video i appreciate it and how this uploaded vitamin a The substances, let's go over a little overview of it too, right now at the ending. So these substances are fat soluble. Vitamin A, fat soluble substances that can be found highly in.